In the midst of the holiday season, and with rumors circulating around the internet surrounding new graphics cards from Nvidia, I thought I'd take a look to see how the GPU market is currently doing, and if there are some enticing deals out there that consumers should be taking advantage of. The past year has witnessed its fair shares of letdowns during initial launches, however, as they say, time has a way of mending wounds. But has that time truly healed the industry's collective disappointments? Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel, and I hope you've all been doing well. I wanted to make this video to talk to you guys about the current state of the GPU market, see where prices for most of the GPUs are sitting at, if there are any good deals out there, and in general, just recap the year. One of the other reasons why I wanted to make this video is because we've seen a lot of rumors and quote-unquote leaks surrounding new GPUs that Nvidia is planning on releasing, and we've done a few videos recently on the channel covering possible specs, so you can check all of that out. There was recently a review embargo document that got leaked which had dates for when these super cards will hit store shelves. It looks like the 4070 Super will be the first on January 17th and that makes sense because when looking at the specs it seems to have the most substantial jump out of the three. So they want to get their best improvement out first, generate the most amount of hype, and you'll have reviewers talking about this how the 4070 Super has quote unquote fixed the series or it's much better value etc. Then we have the 4070 Ti Super Super launching on the 24th, which is going to be a mild upgrade, and then we have the 4080 Super on the 31st, which will be an insignificant upgrade over the original model. In terms of pricing, that's all up in the air, but the rumors are pointing towards cheaper pricing, and a lot of people are leaning towards this. But I'm not really so sure about that, and this will tie into what we're going to be talking about next. I also wanted to quickly mention that Nvidia will be launching two other GPUs in the coming months. One will be the RTX 4090. D. This is a slightly cut down 4090 with no overclocking support for the Chinese market to appease US exporting restrictions, and also the RTX 3056 gigabyte, which I also made a video about recently. Long story short, just ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist. Moving away from future graphics cards, let's take a look to see what's going on currently, and starting from the high end, if you were in the market for an RTX 4090, well it doesn't look like you're going to have an easy time getting one, or if you do, be prepared to pay a considerably above MSRP for it. It's not as drastic as it was during the crypto mining boom, but there is still quite a markup. This has been ongoing since the start of the quarter because of the AI demand, cards are being scooped up and shipped to China, so that's caused a shortage of 4090s. I'm not sure if supply will normalize soon, but we're getting to the point now where even if you did want a 4090, are you really okay with paying MSRP or above MSRP? We're talking $1,600 plus for a GPU that's over a year old at this point, and people within this segment will be wondering, should I just wait and keep saving and use that towards the RTX 5090? Now, if you need it for work and you're going to be using it to make money, then yeah, that's a totally different story. Plus, on the flip side, I think that given what we're hearing about Blackwell, which is their next-gen gaming architecture, I've got a feeling that the 4090 is going to hold its value really well. It's a possibility where you can perhaps buy a 4090 now and several months down the road, sell it for the price you paid for, or even flip it for a higher price. You can actually do that right now since the prices have gone up. Should the 4090 be out of reach for you, there are two other options that are available to you. The first would be the RTX 4080. It still offers pretty good performance for the vast majority of users. The issue with this card was that in terms of it being a true 3080 successor, it was priced way too high. Despite that, demand for this GPU hasn't been atrocious but definitely not as high as some of the other x80 class cards we've seen from previous generations. But you can see right now that due to the 4090 being out of stock, it does indeed look like people have been turning towards this card as an option because it's still selling at around MSRP. So prices have creeped back up because I recall in the summertime, it was selling for below $1,100. Along with that, stock seems limited too. Over on Newegg, not too many AIB cards are available. But also keep in mind with some of the previous rumors we discussed surrounding the RTX 40 Super Series, they also mentioned how the RTX 4080 and 4070 Ti aren't being produced anymore as those manufacturing lines have been shifted towards producing the 4080 Super and 4070 Ti Super. So what you're seeing on store shelves is basically the last batch, so it could be a combination of the two. 
Now, if you don't care about the NVIDIA experience, you don't care about ray tracing and upscaling, you just want pure raster performance for modern games, then the 7900 XTX is your next best option as it's around a couple hundred dollars cheaper and offers relatively the same performance as the 4080. On that note, if there were to be any price drops by now, I thought it would have been on the AMD side of things because in the past we have seen AMD cards after they've reached the one year mark to have their prices drop down considerably. So I was assuming around this time that the 7900 XTX would have been around $800 to $850 regularly, but no, that's clearly not what's happening here. If it was selling for $800, then I think it would have shaken up the market a bit. If the 4080 Super does indeed come out, and it's launched at a cheaper price at around $1,000, then I can see AMD dropping prices to retaliate. I mean, they'd have to. They wouldn't really have much of a choice. The 7900 XTX is already selling poorly compared to the 4080, which says a lot considering the latter isn't even one of the most popular cards in Nvidia's lineup. The situation with the 7900 XT is a bit different. You can now pick up this card for $100 less than MSRP regularly regularly, but everyone and their dog knows that the 899 price they initially launched it at was total BS. Just a simple upselling tactic and it should have been $800 to begin with. So a year later, there's not much movement here either, and what was killing this card in the beginning was the 6950 XT, which offered nearly identical performance and was selling for around $600 often, but it seems like that ship has long sailed since you can't even find it in stock anymore. Same with the 6900 XT, so high-end RDNA 2 is basically depleted. Alternatively, you have the RTX 4070 Ti, it seems to be around 5-10% to slower than the 7900 XT depending on the title, and you only get 12GB of VRAM, but you do get access to those Nvidia features we discussed before, better upscaling, better ray tracing, but again, this was another GPU that should have originally been the 4070 in my opinion, and it should have sold for $600, and right now we can see that it's still selling for around MSRP, give or take. Then when it comes to the RTX 4070, which according to the Steam hardware survey, is the most popular card from the 40 series, it's going for about $50 cheaper than MSRP. So not a lot of movement for this card either, but given that it seems to be popular for a new GPU solution, then I wouldn't expect any drastic drops for it either. On the other side, we've got AMD's RX 7800 XT. The price on this card has actually gone up considerably. I knew there were some AIB cards that were never sold at MSRP to begin with, those were the premium models, but it seems like now unless you buy the reference card from AMD's website directly, you will have to pay above that, and that is a detriment to its value proposition, which was highlighted by a lot of bigger reviewers. I personally said that it was mediocre because you could have always purchased the RX 6800 XT for around that price anyways, actually a little bit less, so it wasn't that big of a deal. The 7700 XT is still also selling for around $450, and this was a GPU that pretty much everyone wrote off, said that it needed to be $400, but I would argue this card is actually still a much better option than the atrocious 4060 series. Only reason why why these cards are still selling is because they're the cheapest new 40 series options that you can buy, and it looks like pricing wise, they're still selling for around MSRP. These cards just didn't offer anything meaningful over the previous gen 3060 and 3060 Ti. You might argue that, you know, they have what, that one game changer feature, DLSS 3 with frame gen, but honestly, in order to even take proper advantage of frame gen, you need a decently high base FPS, and attaining that even on these cards is questionable. I would personally get a refurbished RTX 3070 for $300 as opposed to buying a new RTX 4060 any day of the week, but that whole used versus new debate is a topic for a different video. Then for AMD's entry level 7000 series GPUs, we have the RX 7600, which seems to be hovering around $250. So yes, it's below MSRP, but again, it's the price point it should have launched at to begin with, so there's really nothing to get hyped up about there. So after going through the whole stack of video cards from AMD and Nvidia, you can see how throughout all the segments there has been little to no movement in pricing. And in fact, in some cases, prices have gone up. I don't know about you, but if it were me, I'd be very hesitant on picking up any new GPU from the market when most of them have reached the one year mark and are still selling for MSRP or above. I mean, aside from the 4090, there was not a single GPU that came out this year which made me go, oh wow, this is actually excellent bang for your buck. None. Because as I've said in the past, both of these manufacturers have shifted everything up a tier. 
Going forward, I believe this is going to be the norm, unlike previous generations where we'd see some hefty discounts for GPUs once they have reached the one year mark, especially for cards from AMD. The prices are just going to remain the same as they are now. And one of the other contributors to this is these manufacturers aren't going to be releasing cards that will totally eclipse the older model with much lower pricing, rendering them unviable. Remember, when the RTX 3070 was announced for $500, I saw so many memes poking fun at those who purchased an RTX 2080 Ti a few months prior for like 1200 bucks. Whereas now if you want RTX 3080 levels of performance and you don't want to go used, you can get the 7800 XT, that's around 540-ish dollars, or an RTX 4070 for a similar price. So we're talking about $150 less three years later, and that to me is abhorrent progress. With barely any changes in pricing, this does make me concerned with how the RTX 40 Super Series is going to be turning out, and I'm seeing far too many people believing that we are going to get a price reduction. Believe me, I'd love to be wrong, but I'm just not leaning towards that side. Because if you think about it, if they're able to sell those cards without any significant price drops, then I can't really see why Nvidia would introduce an RTX 4080 Super at say $1,000 when the original model goes for $1,200. I also mentioned this before too, but prices can very well stay the same, or they might even go up. For the 4080 Super, that's doubtful, considering what happened with the 4080, but for something like the 4070 Super, which is going to be a substantial jump, I really wouldn't be surprised to see it get bumped up to $700. We're going to have to wait and see what Nvidia does, but personally, just keep your expectations low, and hey, if it turns out to be better, then that's a bonus. In conclusion, the GPU market is in a state of flux. With prices remaining high and new releases on the horizon, the upcoming RTX 40 Super Series from Nvidia is generating a lot of buzz. It's important to manage your expectations. While we all hope for significant improvements, and competitive pricing, the reality may be different. The current market trends suggest that substantial price drops for older models are becoming less common. This could be a new norm where prices remain steady long after a GPU's initial release and well into its release cycle. It's a stark contrast to previous years when consumers could expect significant discounts on GPUs hitting the one-year mark. Moreover, the belief that the new Super Series will come with a price reduction might be overly optimistic. If the existing cards continue to sell well at their price, Prices, at their current prices that is, there's little incentive for Nvidia to lower prices for new models. It just doesn't make sense. In fact, for some models like the 4070 Super, we might even see a price increase. So what does this really mean for consumers? It means being strategic and informed. Keep an eye on market trends, stay up to date with the latest news, and more importantly, manage your expectations. Remember, the value of a GPU is not just in its price, but also in its performance, longevity, and how well it meets your specific needs. Alrighty guys, so that'll do it for this one, we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.